Hello? Hey, Mr. Stockman. Hey, Mr. Balsiger. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm great. What do you What do you want? <laughs> well, I wanted to tell you the story about my two black labs, Zeus and Xena. Do you remember them? Uh, of course I remember Zeus and Xena. Man, when they were little puppies, they looked so much alike. I thought maybe they had exactly the same genetic information. I remember we would visit my mother and switch their collars. We'd put Zeus's green collar on Xena and Xena's red collar on Zeus. We'd go to my mom's house. And, uh, you know, it was so funny to us because she would go over and pet Xena with, with Zeus's collar on and say, oh, good boy, good boy, Zeus, to Xena. And, oh, man, we thought that was so funny. Just like this? <laughs> I mean, look at that. You know, that got me thinking about genetic variation. Do you think black lab puppies could tell us apart? Well, let's think about that further. How about we take a look, closer look at ourselves? Whoa! You know... If, if one of us either shaved and wore glasses, uh huh. Oh wait, no. If one of us had a beard and the other one had glasses, look at this. Our, our student, we could just. I could go to your room. You could go to my room. And our students wouldn't know the difference. You know, because we are. Uh, I mean, look at this. Can you guys see that? Let me add a little. What color is that? I've got a pretty a, complex I think, beard. I think a little, yeah, and maybe a little green. You got a little, a black. <laughs> yeah, that's that's looking that's looking pretty good. Oh, you need glasses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, which I one mean, was me? Do you remember? Oh, there is one big difference between you and I, Mr. Balsiger, is just that I'm much more handsome. Oh, really? I was thinking that. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Now I look exactly like you. Kind of freakish. Kind of like Batman and Robin. Genetic variation. Yeah. So where does genetic variation come from? This, this is a question I ponder often, not just with about your black labs or whether or not we actually are the same person, uh, clones, which, well, we are not. Uh, but where does genetic variation come from? I mean, uh, why are different different types of creatures the same, different? I don't know what I'm trying to say. Well, we've been studying a lot about meiosis and where the genetic variation comes from there. Um, so why is it, if, if I were to have one million children, why would they all be different? Well, sexual reproduction is a big piece of that. Combining genes with two parents. Um, and when we combine those genes, what has to happen before, of course, is to produce gametes. And during the production of gametes... Like we, eggs and sperm. Exactly. We have independent assortment, like is the ones you've inherited from mom or dad on the left or right. Uh, so this is like if I had if I was heterozygous for a trait, let's just give it the letter A. If I was big A or little A, you know, uh, which sperm gets which allele from that trait is is uh, random. Exactly, and then crossing over of uh, which particular genes are going to be uh, uh, passed on to uh, which sperm cells or egg cells. And this isn't just uh, a ran you know independent assortment of just 23 chromosomes. Uh, pairs of chromosomes, like which of the pair goes to which uh, sperm or egg cell, but the crossing over makes the 23 number of chromosomes, like 23 different possibilities of combinations, uh, even more daunting, uh, into the millions, maybe, of possibilities. But sexual reproduction is not the only way which genetic variation uh, can occur. The other one is genetic mutations. Oh. Now we haven't talked about genetic mutations yet, but that's what we are. That's what this lecture is about: is uh, what is exactly a genetic mutation, and what effect does it have upon the variation of a population? Um, well, it's an error. Genetic mutation is an error in the, uh, that occurs during gene verification. Now, some of you really carefully did the DNA replication activity, and you took a while to match up the base pairs, and you made sure that uh, all the G's were matched with C's and all the A's with T's. Well, sometimes mistakes happen. Uh, while there are enzymes that exist, which will then proofread to make sure that 
all the letters in the, are in the correct place, it's still not perfect. Like DNA polymerase 1 and 2? Exactly. Now, there's roughly 1 in a million bases um, that are replicated incorrectly. And if we have about 3 million bases, that means we probably have about 3 mistakes. The chances are high of that. That each one of, each one of us has a mutation. Uh, some scientists estimate that each human being contains up to a hundred new genetic mutations. A hundred? Wow. That's inconceivable. Then, won't I have like an extra arm or fins or gills or like blue hair or something? Well, it all depends on not only the type of genetic mutation, but also where it occurs in the DNA. There's uh -huh. a lot of our DNA that scientists think are just kind of a nonsense uh, kind of space filling stuff. Oh, but the key thing is the stuff that's passed on to the next generation. I mean, so maybe I have a genetic mutation in a skin cell or a muscle cell in the DNA there. But the ones that are the only genetic mutations that will uh, actually pass on to my offspring is ones that are found in either sperm cells or egg cells. And they'll actually tell you that on the back of a chemical bottle if you're working in a lab. They'll tell you whether or not the chemical you're working with can cause uh, genetic mutations that are inheritable. Or in other words, the ones that you can pot pass off to your egg or sperm cells. Hmm. These are the ones that would go to your offspring and these are the ones that could cause a lot of problems or potentially a lot of benefits. That little green star down the bottom is uh, a symbol that we're going to be using for, we want you to write this information down. You'll see that throughout the rest of this slideshow. So there's two types of uh, genetic mutations. There's a point mutation, which is the most common one. Uh, it's called a point mutation because it literally is a mutation that occurs at a very specific point. Uh, a frame shift also sounds a little bit like uh, uh, what the name says, it's much less common, and literally it shifts part of the DNA up or down, depending on an insertion or a deletion. We're going to talk about the point mutations first. Um, a point mutation occurs when one base is paired with the wrong base during application. So of course, uh, T, normally T and A bond together and G and C bond together, but it would be wrong if G was bonding with T or C was bonding with A. Uh, particularly common when mutagens, like the chemicals that Mr. Balsker was referring to, uh, increase the chance that those mutations uh, are present. Here's a, an example. Oh. Can you identify the mutation? I'll try. Okay. On the top is the <laughs> on the top is the original DNA strand. C should bond with G. G sit on the C, that's correct. T to A, T to A, A T. Wait. Wait a second. G's don't bond with T's. Hey, what's happening right there? What is that? That yeah. is a point mutation. It's the side of the, of the point mutation. So literally, we can point to it. It's right there. It's that spot where, where, where there should have been one thing, there was another. That says mistake. <laughs> frame shift mutation. Again, all of these have the star on the bottom. A frame shift mutation is when a base is inserted or deleted during DNA replication rather than a base replacing another base. So here's the example. Can you figure out where the frame shift occurred? So, A and T, A and T. Well, then, but then look right there. That's everything shifted down a spot. Oh, that's not right. So it looks like was something added or deleted? Something was deleted. Right there, right there, and the G that should have bonded with the C was deleted, and all the others were shifted over. Hence the name frame. Shift. This is a bigger deal because just in, instead of just uh, affecting one little amino acid code 
this would affect all of the following amino acid yeah. codes. Yeah, exactly. So instead of just having one base wrong, now it's got all those the things rest following is now messed up. So what do genetic mutations actually do? Depends. Depends. What a cop out. Well, only 2% of our DNA actually codes for protein. As Mr. Balsk mentioned earlier, that whether a mutation has an effect or not depends on the type of mutation where the mutation occurs. Some of that DNA actually isn't coding for proteins. It's just, well, we don't know what it's doing, actually. But it's, uh, not, it's not clearly coding for protein. It, I think it has the acronym uh, ISSR, Intersequence Simple Repeats. And it's just kind of, maybe it's nonsense. Maybe it's not. Oh, there's that star. Uh, if a point mutation occurs in non-coding DNA, there will be no effect. At least not that we none that we know of. If a frame shift mutation occurs in non-coding DNA, there probably will be. Uh, that's a typo. If a frame shift mutation occurs in coding DNA, there probably will be an effect since the following DNA sequence will be shifted over, thus changing the codons. No, that's not a typo because a typo? if 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 it made a, a frame shift and even a spot that was supposedly nonsense DNA, oh. it would shift it down for the rest of the DNA strand. So if you could imagine a long string stretched from one side of the room to the other, and um, that's your DNA strand, you have two of them running next to each other, and they're all matched up neatly with the base pairs. If you take one away, then that whole rest of the string, wherever it occurred from, would be affected. So any genes, any later, genes on later on in the, on the chromosome up. will be messed up too. Okay. That's why they're a bigger deal. Uh, if a mutation occurs in a coding region of DNA, the mutation can be either neutral, harmful, or beneficial. So meaning either... Who cares? Nothing that happens. That doesn't affect the phenotype at all. It's still the same proteins are being made to do the same jobs, and so it doesn't affect anything. Or, in a rare occurrence, uh, it's something that is detrimental to the organism. And then beneficial is even more rare. Yeah. Somehow it's an enzyme that can uh, maybe survive in a greater temperature range or maybe it can uh, work faster or last longer. or Very rare. But it does happen. Hey, write this down. Write it. Write it now. Hit pause if you need to. Oh, that was it. We'll see you guys in class. Ciao.